recording has started. That's the first words of every recording. Okay. This is the W3C WebRTC Working Group meeting. We abide by the W3C patent policy, and only people and companies listed on the page are allowed to make substantive contributions. At this meeting, we're going to cover some issues with what WG streams and then talk about the Media Capture Transform API. So a little bit about the meeting. These are links to the specs. The slides are up on the wiki. We do need a scribe. Do we have a volunteer? You don't have to take down everything, just the major decision points. Any volunteers for note taking? Inscribe. And take care of it, Donna. Uh, okay, thanks, Tom. And as Harold mentioned, the meeting's being recorded and it will be made public. Okay, just a note about the code of conduct. We operate under the W3C Code of Ethics and Professional Conduct. While we're all passionate, let's try to keep the conversations cordial and professional. A little bit about tips. Uh, we're asking you to. We're going to run a queue like they do in the ITF. So if you want to get into the queue, type plus Q. And then when you want to leave, type minus Q in the, in the Google Meet chat. So we'll be using that. Of course, use headphones and, and wait for the microphone access to be granted before speaking. Uh, it's also helpful to state your full name just for the recording, although we can probably recognize you by now. Uh, I don't think we'll be doing any uh, poll. We'll be using the Google Meet poll mechanism, but we may take polls in the chat. Okay, just a few notes on document status. Just because something is in the W3C repo doesn't mean it's been adopted by the working group. That requires a formal call for adoption. Uh, and then just a reminder that editor's drafts don't represent working group consensus, um, but working group drafts do. And <clears throat> we can merge PRs without consensus, but uh, as long as we have a note. Okay, so here's what we're gonna try to get done today. Uh, UN is going to talk a little bit about the streams pipeline model and some of the issues that are under discussion there. Uh, we'll then get into an alternative uh, media capture transform API proposal by UN and Yanivar, and then Harold will speak on the existing uh, proposal. And then uh, we'll try to make sense of it all in the wrap up and next steps. Um, we're going to try to keep pretty rigid time control. So we'll, I'll give a warning two minutes before time is up, and, and we will move on uh, once we get to, to the time limit. Okay, so uh, until 8.30, um, we'll have UN present on some of the streams issues uh, that he's found and that are under discussion in the What WG Streams Working Group. UN, you have the floor. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, as Bernard said, uh, this uh, presentation is about uh, topics and issues we discussed uh, partially with uh, Yonivar uh, when we dived into uh, exploring whether stream is a good fit for media pipelines. So we, the goal is to identify blocking issues and uh, which may allow us or not to adopt uh, streams as a founding uh, API for a media pipeline. So before, um, maybe next slide. So okay. a, a media pipeline, is basically a way to uh, connect sources with things. So that's why there's uh, the diagram there, where basically sources are readable streams, uh, things are writable streams, and you can use either JavaScript to uh, connect sources and things, or you can use transform streams. So the example shows shows there is like the end goal that everybody would like to to have, which which is go from the camera up to uh, the network with just uh, streams. So, um, as we as we'll see, we will just focus on a video pipeline here, and we we want to discuss the issues around threading and uh, video frame interaction uh, with streams. And uh, so, let's look at uh, threading first. So, next slide. So, the first question is uh, where to run the pipeline. Um, Given the real-time operations here, 
uh, the best place is probably a dedicated background thread. Um, if you look at web audio, for instance, an audio graph is very similar. It's roughly the same as the streams pipeline, except it's a graph, but other than that, it's really the same. But in the web audio case, uh, the spec clearly states that the audio graph is set up in the main thread, but it runs in the audio thread. And the spec is very clear about that. And all implementations are uh, abiding to it. And the nice thing is, of course, the audio thread is a high priority thread. So you, you get very uh, good performances there. In our case, uh, we're using a generic approach, streams. And the situation there is not clear. There's no concept of a new thread or a main thread, whatever. So the, the safest assumption we can make is to consider that video frames actually flow in the setup thread. Um, if we wanted to not assume that, we would need to optimize pipe two and pipe through operations. And uh, maybe next slide, uh, we, we can illustrate that uh, it's, it's not easy. So the example one there is uh, the case where you're doing the funny hat thing from a camera to uh, an HTML media element. So let's say there's a native uh, transform there and you can pipe to the media element in, in some ways. So there's no JavaScript. Uh, and there you have a call to pipe through and a call to pipe to. So from reading the spec from uh, this example, we don't know whether, uh, where will flow uh, the, the video frames. It might be main thread, it might be a background thread. Uh, it's really up to the user agent. And uh, that makes things really complicated from a web developer perspective that actually wants to get guarantees. And the worst thing uh, is that- UN, that would be true even if this uh, code example were to be written in a worker, you think it still might flow on the main thread? Uh, oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, it, it's running, the safest assumption is that it's running where we call pipe through and where we call pipe two. Oh, okay, so, yeah. So if we call pipe through in the main thread, uh, we don't know whether it will be main thread or background thread, but potentially we can assume it's main thread. If it's called in a worker, we would say, oh, it's probably called in the worker thread. Uh, if we go from example one to example two, which is the same thing, except that this time we have a JS transform instead of, of a native transform, there we are almost sure that uh, it will flow on the setup thread and uh, not on the background thread because you need to execute JavaScript. If you go with example three, which is uh, using T uh, after the native transform and using pipe two there, it's really unclear where uh, video frames will, uh, will actually flow. Will it, will it be uh, optimized by the user agent or will it not be? It's, uh, we cannot predict that. So that's why I think that the safest assumption we can consider is that the thread where it's done the setup is also the thread where it's done the processing. And this is by the very nature of streams being a generic mechanism that is not, uh, that is applicable to more than video frames and more than real time uh, processing. Next slide. So one potential related idea is to transfer the stream uh, to worker, for instance, to get rid of the main thread issues. And uh, currently to transfer a stream, you, it's specified in, in the spec as uh, you take the stream you want to transfer, you pipe to in a sp special identity transform that will actually send uh, the content over to uh, the worker thread or the worker context, let's say. Um, if you just basically implement the spec like that, you, you don't avoid a main thread blocking because the, the source is still in main thread. So you have to do optimizations like, uh, like the clever ones they, they did in Chrome. The first issue here is that uh, this optimization is uh, not standard and it's really difficult to make transparent to web developers as uh, discussed in the GitHub issue. Uh, the links are on the slides. Um, I also actually tried uh, Chrome last week and the current implementation uh, around that era is not compliant on a number of points as well. And the second issue really is that like pipe two and pipe through, it's very hard to predict whether the optimization, uh, the transfer uh, optimization will actually kick in on, or not. And the fact that it kicks in is really important from a growth point of view. So again, next, next slide for some examples. So example one is the typical case where uh, Chrome will optimize the thing. 
uh, you have a camera for it, or a stream, you transfer it to Worker, it, it's working fine. Now, let's say that for the purpose of the example, we add a native transform between the camera and the stream will actually uh, transfer. There we don't know what will happen. Maybe it will be optimized, maybe not. Uh, example three is again the same. Let's say that you have a camera readable uh, stream. Let's say you teed and you transfer one of the, the teed. What will happen uh, in terms of optimizations? We, we don't know. And the same applies to uh, non-camera streams. Will peer connection, get display media or get viewport media uh, be optimized or not? We, we don't really know. It's, the spec doesn't say anything. And let's say you transfer uh, a media stream track like uh, get viewport media to another frame and you then take a stream that you transfer to worker will be optimized uh we we don't know and from a web developer perspective there's no way you know whether uh, it will be optimized or not this is very different from web audio where you have a spec you know it will, it's guaranteed that it will run in a background thread in an optimal thread so uh that's why next slide if we if we look at uh the idea of using uh, transferring streams uh, for our purpose, it, we, we see that um, it's really a generic tool uh, like streams are. It's designed for flexibility and it's working fine, but we, we cannot guarantee performance. Um, the good news is that we have media stream track transfer, which is a dedicated tool to media stream track. And there we can design it so that we guarantee uh, performance. We can guarantee that the, uh, the, the transferring will, will be optimal. And uh, that's the proposal I, I think we, we, should go, we should go with, which is to build on media stream track transfer. And then we, we have no hard requirement to uh, res resolve the GitHub issue to actually enable to uh, have a spec compliant uh, op op uh, optimized video frame of optimized stream video frame transfer mechanism. And still, if uh, with that we have like uh, optimization, like pipe two is optimized, pipe four is optimized, it's, it's a bonus. It is great, you, you have more, but at least you, you, you're sure that you, you get uh, a decent level of performance because you're in a worker and uh, it's as if uh, frames will go uh, in the worker thread instead of being blocked by the main thread. Um, so that's it for. So let's look at um, pipeline buffering. So next slide. So as we uh, discussed in the in the past, um, buffering with streams, so it's specific to streams, happens at each transform step step in the media pipeline. Um, so in, in the slides, there are like two examples, and the typical stream pipeline is the one on the top, where the pipeline is filled greedily which is uh, great when you want to process all things, like uh, for instance, when you have a big document and you unzip it progressively and you, you transform it progressively like you do, you're doing UTF-8 or whatever. Uh, the processing can be optimized so that it happens sort of in parallel. It's up to the user agent. And you're also sure that you have the slowest delay possible between uh, the decompression and the render. Uh, but in our case, where we have a video media pipeline, uh, it's sort of different. Uh, first, uh, you might not want to process all, all frames. If there's a one second old video frame, for instance, you, you might prefer to uh, skip it and get the freshest frame, for instance. And that's what media stream track processor is, is doing, actually. Uh, if you do not process frames fast enough, it will drop frames so that you next time you will get the freshest frame. And uh, to, to have that, and to also reduce buffering, uh, the second pipeline uh, on, on the, so the second below, is the one where uh, we are doing processing sequential, which has a cost, of course, but it has also some benefits uh, in, in our case. And um, I think that in general, we, it's safer to, to get the second um, pipeline model for, mid, uh, for video frames. And the first issue is that uh, the second pipeline cannot be built currently with streams. You can only basically uh, build the, uh, the first pipeline. Next slide. 
And so this is a real issue because, uh, as I said, uh, video things are really hoping to get the freshest video frames, and also uh, video frames are big and and scary resources. And also, it's not very clear from the web developer perspective what, what happens because the buffering is uh, sort of to, sort of hidden to to web application. So we really need a solution to turn off buffering. Um, so your Niva yeah. file issue 11, 11, 11, 58, uh, which, and, and chances are good, are high that we'll get a solution there. And the solution uh, displayed here might be uh, using a watermark, high watermark of zero and calling an API when, when you need it. Um, I, I don't think the plan is to have uh, no buffering by default, meaning that what we would like to get as a default, which is the safe, uh, uh, safe behavior, will probably not be what streams uh, will be doing by default. Uh, and so uh, this requires web developers to learn about that, which might be good. But also if they use like streams, they will end up into uh, the first model, which might have side effects. Uh, so it's a bit sad that uh, there, if we use streams, we, we end up with uh, not using what what is the default uh, behavior of streams. Uh, next slide. And it's it's also a bit a bit sad. Um, like generally for streams, the buffering you you don't really care about it because the idea is that streams will handle it for you through, through back pressure. But in our case, for media pipeline, maybe some limited buffering might be good. Uh, if you have too long tasks in the pipeline, like you're doing encoding and uh, and a funny hat thing, then you, you might want to have like uh, uh, doing the encoding and uh, funny hat thing is sort of in parallel to, to reduce delay, but nothing else. Um, so it, it would actually be good to uh, do some, uh, allow some limited buffering. Um, but it, it's not really easy with what we're, doing, what we're working with streams to, to do that. First, the buffering is done in their own queue and it's mostly opaque, opaque by design. Uh, so if you ask as a developer a question like, um, how much buffering am I doing in the pipeline? It, it's not really easy to, to answer the question there with streams. And also the, the queuing strategy is very static. So you set up the pipeline, you set the high watermark and that's basically it. If you want to change a little bit because there, there might be some other constraints, then you basically need to uh, redo your pipeline. So you redo your setup. So um, that, that, that's, that's not great. Um, plus the idea that, yeah, you're using like non-default stream approaches uh, which are not easy to understand. Um, I think what could, streams might be able to uh, cover the use case, but in terms of complexity, I'm not sure that it's uh, it's a, a good trade-off, honestly. Um, so that's it for buffering. Let's go with uh, teeing now. Uh, um, uh, question, uh, I think there were some questions on the buffering issue um, oh, is that okay. what you wanted? To, we're in the queue for you, Anivar. So, um, so, so how should we proceed there? Because I, I only have like until ten minutes okay. to finish. Why, why don't we finish the slides and then we'll we'll take the questions if that if okay. that works. Yeah. Okay. So let's go with T. Um, as we know, media stream track have built-in support for multiple consumers, and T is the way to do this multiple consumer thing with, with streams. A typical example in, 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 this, in the slides ahead there is we, we do some effects on a video and then we, we tee the, the, the end results to do both rendering and encoding in parallel. Uh, another use case might be uh, doing analytics uh, in parallel to rendering, for instance. And T is valid API. It's already used for the stream, so we, we should be able to use it. And uh, we, should, we should not be in a place where we would say, oh no, please do not use T, we will find something else. We, we should be able to use this. So, uh, next slide. As we discussed this uh, a couple of times, we know that T is broken. Uh, if a stream is teed in branch one and branch two, 
the same object, so the same frame F, will be presented to both branches. And if one branch is closing F, then the other branch is only getting uh, a frame which is already closed, so cannot, cannot really use it. The potential solution here is to use a structured clone as discussed in issue, uh, in issue 1156. And uh, it should be fairly straightforward to adopt. I mean, uh, if you compare to the other case with buffering there, it's structured clone equals true. And we, I hope we know what structured clone means. So that's, that's kind of, uh, okay. It's a bit sad again, that the default behavior is the focus one. And uh, there's a misalignment between the default streams behavior and uh, and the behavior we actually want, but at least there uh, there's a clear, clear path forward that can be understood reasonably well. Uh, next slide. So, are we good? Uh, not really. We we need more more chance more changes to key than just structure clone, because if you apply structure clone, uh, then you create hidden buffering, and if the branches are not consuming uh, at the same pace, uh, you end up into issues. Uh, the typical issue will be that uh, the camera will run out, of, run out of buffers and branch one will starve of data because branch two is not consuming enough of the, of the data. And the typical solution in, uh, in typical uh, real-time processing flow of uh, video frames is to drop frames as needed, like media stream track processor is doing. That way, branch one can continue at its pace, and branch two can get fresh frames as well. Um, my understanding of the issue right now is uh, that there's no clear solution to that issue. In particular, uh, streams by design are not expected to drop frames internally. And if you add external mechanisms outside of streams to uh, read as fast as possible, then uh, you end up into issues with potentially with back pressure as well. And, uh, and that's, that's really a bummer because uh, it's very specific to what, what working group streams. Uh, as we said, uh, as we saw uh, in July, GS permits based callbacks there can solve uh, this issue in a couple of lines. So it should be possible to, uh, to solve in a, in a good way. That uh, since streams have a model, and the model is not aligned with the, the goal there, it, it makes things more difficult than, than it should be. And uh, yeah, that, that's an issue that we, we need to solve somehow if we want to, to use strings there. Let's focus on uh, video frame lifetime management, which is the last issue I think we, we're planning to discuss today. So um, the expected use of video frame is to call close as soon as possible, because video frames are scarce uh, resources, and usually they stem from a buffer pool, and if the buffer pool is exhausted, then you're not in a good situation. And we do not want to rely on garbage collection there. Uh, but streams are relying on garbage collection, and that makes uh, the overall approach uh, not great. Uh, let's say, for instance, that we're using uh, a stream wrapper around video encoder. Uh, we need to decide whether the video encoder wrapper will close video frame, will call video frame close or not, since video encoder does not call close. It calls internally clone. But media stream track generator is calling close. Uh, and this is so that if you pipe to media stream track processor to media stream track generator, then you end up with calling close automatically. Uh, so we, we are seeing that we have two different models here. And streams could be used both ways. There's no uh, uh, way to enforce like the case where a right over stream will you always call, call close, for instance. It, it's, it's not done that way. And from an API perspective, it's difficult and error prone for a web developer to actually understand where they are, in which world they are, and which, whether a library will go in, in world one or world closed or world not closed and up to you uh, since there's no API contract. And um, I'm not quite sure how we can solve this. Um, what possibility, one possibility would be to go with some form of uh, uh, dedicating handling in the stream of video frames object, like a subclass or something like that, where 
we would have built-in video frame memory management. Let's say that uh, you uh, call, uh, you enqueue a video frame, then uh, the video frame would, would be cloned. And when you remove it from the queue, from the internal queue, we'll, you will call close. Uh, I haven't heard any work in that direction. So it's uh, something we, that we need to solve. And if you look at the pipeline, um, if you start to uh, change the pipeline, you will need to cancel things. And if you cancel a stream that has some video frames in its queue, then you rely on garbage collection to get the video frames. And this will happen if you, for instance, tier a video frame and you so one of the tiered video frame will have uh, buffers in its queue. And then if you cancel one of them, then uh, you can only use garbage collection. So we need a solution. Uh, I, I don't know what we can do there, but it's certainly something that we, we should do. Um, and I have two minutes for the conclusion. So that's good. Uh, next slide. Um, so yeah, next slide. So we, we need, yeah, we need to solve those issues. Uh, buffering, T and lifestyle management, specifically for video frame, a stream studio frame. Uh, so if we do not do that, then uh, it, things will be difficult. And it's unclear. I mean, progress has been made and that's great, but we need more. And it's unclear to me how, how far we can get. And maybe we can go to directly to the last slide, conclusion three. Uh, so next slide, yeah. So yeah, and my point is that we need to solve those issues or have a very good confidence that we'll solve these issues before selecting the API model. Uh, because if we select a model, it means that we, we want developers to go into that model. So we need to be very sure that it's a good model. And also, since if we pick a model, we, we want, we are sure of it. We, if we use, if we select streams, which has its own benefits, uh, we should extend streams integration with the existing and new APIs. And that means video decoder, video encoder. Uh, I mentioned barcode decoder and face detector, which are also existing APIs or at least proposals. And it does not seem uh, that we are going into that direction. Uh, so far on WebCodex side, I haven't heard of any desire to use streams. In fact, they decided to not use streams because it's helping for the error handling. And um, also as we saw video frames, specific model might make things uh, more difficult uh, for web codec as well. So that's it for uh, my presentation. And uh, there were some uh, questions. Yes, uh, we're gonna open it up for questions now. Uh, for uh, Yanni Bach. Uh, yeah, sorry about that. Uh, so yeah, I, I just uh, had a couple of comments on the uh, slide <coughs> with it, which had the controller release back pressure. Um, <clears throat> I think the goal there is, uh, you had mentioned that that won't be the default behavior, but I do believe the idea is that uh, specifically if you create transform streams, which have a, a, a readable and a writable, uh, if you put a high watermark of zero there today, the pipeline just stops. <clears throat> so the, I think the idea is that if you specify a transform stream, you should be able to specify a transform stream with a zero high watermark, which means no buffering. And then that the transform stream uh, will automatically call release back pressure when uh, something downstream from it reads from it. And I think that's the main, uh, what we're trying to solve is the concept of bufferless transform streams, which would be helpful. Um, and the other thing was about dynamic buffering. Um, it's true that the, the convenience feature of providing high watermarks uh, it's a static one that you set up at the time of the pipe uh, and you have to tear down the pipe again. But nothing prevents JavaScript to write transforms uh, to implement their own buffering, which could be dynamic and they can even drop frames. Uh, they just can't have a zero high watermark to be totally bufferless today. And that's what, what we're trying to solve in that issue. Um, and on the, the third and last, uh, on the stream reliance on garbage collection, I think that pops up uh, as an issue in error situation. And I uh, yeah. uh, suggest that we might be able to solve that by having the the producer of the frames own own those uh, so there might be some uh, 
it's an error situation. It's it's a, a narrower scope of problem, but we still need to solve them. That's yeah, I'm. Thanks. I'm. I'm not op optimistic in uh, solving that at the source level. Honestly, um, I'm. I'm looking forward to a solution there. Which, uh, if we have a solution, then I, I, I'll be happy to remove my concerns. But uh, so far, I do not see how it, how it will work. So, uh, my my understanding is that, uh, and more more generally with uh, lifetime management. Uh, there, there's no API contract, right? If you, you can use, you don't know whether clause will be called or not, and it's depending on the API. And but, I mean, I like consistency, and I like that we would go with just one model. If we, if we had like, uh, if we would implement our own stream-based video frames, we would uh, probably, when we would queue a video frame into the internal queue, we probably call clone, and when we remove it from the queue, we will probably be called call close and things like that. And we, we would define this memory management. And we, we are not. So in any case, we, we are not on solid grounds there. OK. Um, I had a few questions, Yuan. Um, in the current model where we don't have high watermark of zero in the transform frames, have you noticed uh, a significant delay building up because I've been trying to construct these pipelines with up to like five steps, and I haven't haven't noticed enormous delay. Um, it, it really depends uh, what what happens. So what you should try is, for instance, on uh, like let, let's say you have a renderer which is a transform stream. Let's say it's at the end of the pipeline. Let's say that you add a one second delay, and you look okay. at you look at which video frame you, you will get, and so on, and you will see that. Uh, Things will, will will not be will not be great there. It's true that uh, what we, what you happen to have is like uh, currently, if you have like five steps, then you will have five five frames, each one in its in its own right. in its own trans transform. And uh, if you if you're processing things very quickly, uh, things will will be good. If one uh, step is taking some time, like uh, encoding, for instance. Uh, it, it might not be uh, as good, especially if the delay is like changing if you're encoding an iframe or a p-frame, things like that. So, in, in, and also, um, the issue is that currently in the camera pool, you, you might have like 10, 10 video frames, right? Mm -hmm. and if, you, if you build a five steps pipeline, you have five frames that will automatically be uh, allocated and it's a fixed, it's totally fixed. So now you only have five remaining uh, slots, and you, you need to be sure that the encoder, which you do not have control with, uh, will actually uh, release natively uh, the frame so that the camera can, can get to it. And if you're adding that to the fact that maybe it will go out of process and, and so on, um, maybe five is not enough. And it's on devices that have 10 frames. Maybe, f maybe some devices will have uh, lower capacity and will have uh, a smaller number of uh, buffer, buffer frames, and then you will end up into uh, glitches where uh, video frames will, like the camera will stop producing until you release frames, and you will have frame rate that is decreasing and changing. And that's, that's, yeah. that's not great, uh, because you actually just did five IMT uh, transform in your pipeline. And yeah, we, so we should not be in that, in that issue. So one thing I noticed by the lack of streams integration within uh, Web Codex is that right there are actually two queues here. There's the encoder queue, and then there's the streams queue. And so you kind of have to manage these two queues yourself. Um, and in Web Codex, there's no is really the the queue is not uh, transparent at all. You have to kind of keep track of it yourself with the pending output counter. Um, mm -hmm. So that's another weird thing. Like you can, uh, in my own code, I've been seeing up to 30 frames potentially queued in the encoder. Um, so you have to kind of keep track of that. So that's another interesting delay. Um, I have seen effects on the browser itself when you get errors. Sometimes it, it looks like uh, memory management has been significantly disrupted until you garbage collect the entire encoder. And then things kind of go back to normal. Um, so I, I think there's something there in the memory management that's pretty significant, um, but it, it's not 
that, that there is this mismatch. You, wrapping streams is not entirely satisfactory, I don't think, particularly in error cases. Um, yeah, and I, I want to mention uh, the promise-based call. Oh, okay. Uh, I, 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 I'd, re I'd really like to have more minutes for more people. Uh, so you and you already did your presentation. Well, okay. these are questions, uh, so that's normal that I give answers. I mean. Okay, uh, Harold? Yep, uh, so uh, the discussion is discussion, not just questions. Uh, I'll notice a couple of observations. One is that uh, Web Codex did have a streams-based API for a while. After we developed uh, Media Stream Track Processor and Media Stream Track Generator, they said, we don't need to have another one, so they dropped them. Uh, so. And we have had actually very few uh, reports on uh, people having having trouble with these so-called issues. I mean, the the discussion of uh, eleven twenty four, the the issue of uh, of serial buffering. Oh, uh, oh. I mean the no no the the issue of transfer was a bit depressing because. Uh, Otherwise, uh, because it started out with a few messages from people who understand streams very well, and then it uh, got a couple of back and forth between me and Jan Ivar, and then nothing. So I'm eager to see that discussion come back. Uh, my impression is that the real problem here is that uh, uh, the streams model has been somewhat uh, somewhat uh, confused with the act with the streams uh, shim implementation which has these problems well uh, what we should be doing is to have a model have a clean model and uh, the issues are with the implementation of the model uh, so on the comment of t i had a, had a Fun experience of reading the the CL that added uh, T to the specification, and all the peop all the things that people were worried about with T when they added it to the specification were in fact the same thing we worried about. T is a bad design, and uh, it's fairly trivial to write like this much JavaScript and have the T you want, and the T you want is actually quite dependent on uh, on your application. One of the nasty pieces of uh, T that you didn't mention is that it doesn't respect high water mark on the on the downstreams, which stunned me when I discovered that. So T is bad. I agree on that. On the contract uh, point, I'm just tick, trying to take off the point so that we get to it within the next five minutes. On the contract point, uh, I think it's uh, natural to say that a downstream either has to call close or pass the thing on to something that, the frame on to something that calls close for video frames. Uh, and and that, uh, and that they shouldn't de depend on AppStream to do anything. We do have a problem with uh, disrupted pipelines, as you say, in that disrupted pipelines don't seem to have a good method of letting the user define what should happen to what's in the pipeline when it's being disrupted. We should solve that, yes. But uh, my conclusion on uh, seeing these issues raised is that there's some of it some of this is uh, issues with the uh, with the description more than the implementation and some of these are issues that we need to solve but uh, they're not fatal like the t thing is just because it's possible to do something badly is doesn't mean that uh, 
that that all usage usage of this is bad. So my personal opinion is that we're already in the place where where a, a streams based API is superior to a callback based one. Because a callback based one but just means that you have to build everything on top of it all over again. So that's my notes from the conversation so far. Not a question, but notes. Can I answer or is it too late? Uh, no, time? Uh, it, well, uh, three minutes? Sure, we have two minutes. Two minutes. Um, yeah, yeah, I agree with you that T is bad. And uh, we can try to salvage it, it will be difficult. And this is, this is due to the use of strings. As you said, you can use JavaScript to do your own T, and it will be done uh, in a much better way. And that's why promise-based callbacks is uh, is the right is the right approach if you actually want to use T because that's what we will use. You will use promise-based promise callbacks uh, internally, and you will asynchronously uh, iterate over the stream. So in that case, why should we even use strings? Uh, on the close case and on other issues that you was, that you were seeing, they, they're not fatal. Uh, I welcome all oh, the transfer streams as well. I welcome. Uh, uh, changes and I welcome uh, proposals that will uh, fix these concerns. Uh, if we do not have uh, proposals, then what should we do? It just means to me that uh, we, I, I'm not confident. Uh, I, I want proof that this will be solved, and I want proof before we actually decide. Otherwise, we, we are not in a good place. And uh, all of that is because we select streams, which has a defined model, which sort of match, but not entirely. And uh, I want it to match entirely, and uh, so that it's the perfect, perfect thing. And then I will review if we fix these issues. Uh, I, I'll be happy to to use streams because they they offer some some things that are great to have, but uh, they currently offer also uh, very bad things. And I want to remove the bad things before we we go further. Uh, yeah, Nipa. Yeah, so. <clears throat> Uh, I want to uh, disagree with Harold a little bit first that uh, I think all these issues are filed uh, on GitHub, they're public, and that there are issues with the model. Uh, and there are numerous. Uh, at the same time, I wouldn't say that I would also disagree with UN, but I don't think the issues are huge. Uh, and I don't think we should block picking an API surface uh, over these because, uh, frankly, one implementer is already shipping an API. And I think we need to pick uh, and standardize an I. API uh, AS as soon as possible. Um, so, um, and with promise callbacks, <clears throat> you're right that uh, the web codex lifetime model for video frames makes it tricky to keep track of things uh, with streams. Um, and promise callbacks may solve that very easily uh, because uh, you, but the problem is that a promise callback also doesn't work. There are areas where streams work better, for instance, with audio, which we're not talking about yet where, uh, for instance, you encode some audio, it doesn't mean there's a one-to-one -one between encode and getting a callback. Now, streams can handle that, but at the cost of uh, losing track of, it's not a simple input-output one-to-one. I will I welcome pros and cons between uh, promise-based callbacks and uh, streams callbacks. It's true, and streams. It's true that there, I only uh, showed the issues I have with streams. And I, I'll be happy to also get a list from you uh, Harold, Yaniva, or Bernab, about promise-based callbacks and to identify what are the issues. And then we can compare issues of, of both models. Okay. I think uh, we've got to move on to the next uh, presentation, which is uh, Yanivar. So Yanivar, you have the floor. And unmute. <clears throat> All right. Uh, thank you, Yuan, for that uh, uh, setup. Uh, you covered uh, more threading than I anticipated, so this is great. Um, so <clears throat> the first off, uh, why are we here? Well, uh, threading is a, it's a big issue. And I wanted to highlight to build on what you and just said that today, the status quo in, in specs and, and the cross browsers is that the real time media pipeline is off the main thread. That means that the media stream track interface is purely a control surface on the main thread, but that media flows in parallel, uh, either on the dedicated media thread, uh, or other threads, multiple threads. So when you call get user media, you get a track back and you attach that track to a peer connection, <clears throat> you 
you're pretty much done. The browser just takes care of it for you. And if you apply constraints to that track to reduce the uh, resolution, uh, that's an asynchronous call that, that uh, where the actual change in the uh, bit flow happens off, off main thread. <clears throat> so as I illustrate here, you can have a media thread uh, where camera frames move through a downscaler to an RTP sender and it goes out on the network. And the main thread is not doing anything. It doesn't get in the way of that. I mean, that's important. Media delivery never ever blocks on the main thread. Next slide. <clears throat> now, this is true even in WebRTC encoded transform, <clears throat> where we recently added APIs to the sender where uh, JavaScript can modify the encoded data. <clears throat> and uh, the, uh, and there's a bit of a deja vu here in that Chrome, Chrome originally uh, released an API that was on main thread, and we standardized an API that was off main thread. Uh, so, here again, the media thread has a send where the bits go. A sender encodes it and it sends it to a JavaScript encrypt function that's only exposed on worker and it sends it out over the network. And again, nothing blocks on main thread. And that's for encoded video, not even raw video. So since we recognize the importance of this for encoded media, we should be even more concerned about exposing raw uncoded media to main thread because it's a lot more data. Next slide. So the premise here is that the main thread is bad. <clears throat> and so how do we back that up? Uh, well, uh, Chrome Dev Summit in 2019 had an excellent presentation by Surma, which is basically the main thread is overworked and underpaid. <clears throat> and I'm quoting literally here, there's a link if you can follow the YouTube, uh, where Surma says, we are setting ourselves up for failure here. We have no control over the environment our app will run in. The main thread is completely unpredictable. <clears throat> what takes uh, two milliseconds on a modern flagship phone might take 20 milliseconds on the next low end phone. How can we escape this unpredictability? <clears throat> and later in the presentation, the answer is web workers. Uh, he also outlines the, uh, the uh, frame deadlines that we have uh, under 60 frames per second, for instance, we have 60 milliseconds to complete all processing of a frame before it goes, goes to rendering or it's gonna jank, uh, the video is gonna stutter. So on high end devices, you can have uh, you know 90 frames per second, 120, and even some devices of 144 frames where the were less than seven milliseconds uh, of a deadline to finish what we're doing. Uh, and then, so the point here is contention on the main thread is common and unpredictable, and that leads to intermittent miss that can lead to intermittent missed deadlines and video stutter. Uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, things may run fine in controlled environments on the developer's machine in the developer's browser, but not in all browsers and all systems. For instance, when the users uh, actively scroll their page a lot. This becomes a web compatibility issue. <clears throat> in contrast, contention on a dedicated worker thread is relatively non-existent because it is a controlled dedicated environment. Next slide. <clears throat> now, so we mentioned that Web Codex recently had a decision to expose to Windows. And here's what they wrote. They wrote, there is consensus and we agree that media processing in general should happen in a worker context. But then they said not all web codex use cases require this. And they mentioned non real time transcoding. <clears throat> and that was their main argument for exposing this to Windows. And they say expressly that uh, this decision should not be interpreted as a precedent for allowing the proposed DD stream track processor in Windows. And that we need to discuss and consider it on its own merits, which we're doing. <clears throat> and they also, in the spec, there's a best practices for authors using web codex uh, when, when working with real time media are encouraged to ensure their media pipelines operate in worker context entirely independent of the main thread. <clears throat> okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So uh, where is this working group uh, on, on this? So we have, unfortunately, a media capture transform uh, document that says it's not an adopted working group document. <clears throat> that means it's non-standard because there's no consensus. And Google, unfortunately, has shifted in M94. So there's a time uh limit here i think for us to uh, try to standardize something or this becomes the de facto standard <clears throat> now why wasn't it adopted my my thoughts on this is that the problems i had with it i should say <clears throat> is that it exposes real-time pipeline on the main thread by default tracks stay on the main thread while their readable writables may be trans by the readable may be transferred or not 
And this is also fails to encourage using workers, both on JavaScript users and browsers uh, implementing this stuff, because it requires extra optional work by web developers to get off main thread. And it relies on non-standard uh, browser optimizations to fully get off the main thread. <clears throat> also, uh, uh, ergonomics-wise, these APIs are thread coupled to main thread, which is very unfriendly to workers, which I'll show in subsequent slides. So we need to standardize an API without these problems and reclaim the URL. So, and this also was designed before MediaStream track was transferable, which we just had a call for consensus that was positive. So we can rethink the API. Next slide. <clears throat> so um, since MediaStream track is now transferable, we need to go and look at first principles from a worker point of view. <clears throat> so a question here is a worker encounters a track. How does it access, how does it access its data? <clears throat> does it post message it to the main thread to ask it to create a media stream track processor and post message a readable back? Or does it access a readable on that track? The former makes no sense. It shouldn't have to go back to main thread to get access. And this also doesn't necessarily get us off main thread in all cases, in all browsers. <clears throat> Next slide. The second question, <clears throat> a worker has video frames. How does it create a track from it? Uh, does it have to post message to ask main thread to create a generator and post message that writable and maybe a track going back? Or does it call uh, some API to get a writable and a track? <clears throat> Again, the former makes no sense. The worker should be able to create a track directly without having to ask main thread to do it. Uh, and this points out that media same track generator is a weird object. It's a track stuck on main thread. It's not transferable. Yet all its parts, the writable and track clones are. So if we ever extend it, we're stuck on main thread. So I think this is backwards. <clears throat> and it also warps code organization for developers to be main thread oriented. It's also <laughs> untrue. Uh, one sec. Um, now let's uh, discuss that. <clears throat> Excuse me at the end. Yep. So I'll get back to this. Later. It's a marker. <clears throat> Um, so these questions are getting a little harder, but uh, apologies. So this is very, this is a more difficult question, but a very um, relevant one that that UN already posed. How does a worker <coughs> send processed video frames, say over web transport, without, and also maintaining a self view that has high resolution, even though the transport might need to drop frame rate? So we mentioned T already and all these issues. Another option would be to clone the original track, <coughs> but then if we're doing like a video replacement like me in the sky here, uh, you have to do that processing twice and that's undesirable. Or do you post message constraints to the main thread, create a generator, apply constraints to a, a clone from the generator, create a media stream track processor from that clone and post message the generator's writable and the, re uh, the producer's readable back to the worker. <clears throat> uh, no, you would wanna have this, these APIs available in the worker. Um, and this is also an argument I've heard is that uh, media stream tracks, they need to be on main thread anyway, right? Because you're going to assign them to video source object or add them to a peer connection. So here's an example where uh, send track in this case uh, is, is solely created. So uh, it's a track clone that never leaves the worker and is used there to natively downscale post process frames instead of trying to drop frames or downscale using a transform or, uh, or using T. So this is an example where uh, tracks are actually useful in workers. Next slide. And I also want to talk about that sentence I, I brushed through here of post messaging uh, media stream track processes readable or a generator is writable back or, or transferring them at all to a worker. <clears throat> and that this actually violates the intent of what WG is transferable streams, which, uh, which have tunnel semantics. <clears throat> There are a special kind of identity transform, <coughs> excuse me, which has a, the writable side in one realm and the readable side in another realm to implement a cross thread transform. <coughs> so let, this would let, uh, excuse me, <coughs> this would let a source in uh, thread A that has a readable <coughs> transfer that readable to a thread B that could then read from it. They only transfer one side of the stream, basically, the readable or the writable. <coughs> Uh, and they create to exist tunnels on purpose, not solving, not to solve creating them on the wrong thread in the first place. 
And without spec breaking UI optimization, that means media stream track process were readable the remains anchored to main thread on one side, even after transfer, which uh, to me makes media stream processor a broken API built on broken assumptions. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> so uh, an alternative proposal. And here's a link to uh, issue 15, uh, 59, which also has a spec document and more details you could look at. I would encourage you to look at uh, after this presentation, since I'll be going through the, the basics here. The goals are to align the API with transferable media stream tracks for simpler API surface <clears throat> and remove the aforementioned blockers to standardization by exposing real-time media pipeline to workers and not main thread. And also encourage use of workers by making it simple, friendly to workers and the default and also discourage usage on a main thread. This proposal also starts with video um, uh, to, in order to uh, reach an agreement. <clears throat> and because we're trying to present an API to the working group that will be adopted. And we do so by removing exposure on the main thread, which is what Mozilla and Safari want. We focus on video for now, uh, which is uh, Safari has an interest in. And we're also using, we're still using streams, which is what Chrome and Mozilla prefer. <clears throat> so. You might wonder, uh, we just had all this, uh, UN presented all the re reasons why streams are bad. I don't think, I think that's orthogonal to this proposal. And I think those streams problems can be solved. And there are ways to actually, where a readable stream can actually give you promise callbacks if you want them. And I have a slide on that, uh, if you want. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> so onto the API. So here's the proposed API. And I direct your attention to the blue box in the corner, which is able by DL. We're basically exposing a readable attribute on the media stream track, but only doing so in dedicated worker context. That means if you see a medium track on main a media stream track on main thread, you won't see this attribute. But if you post messages to a worker and you look at it there, you will have this readable attribute. <clears throat> so I'm showing the JavaScript only the worker side of it here. Uh, you went showed example slides earlier where that included the post messaging. So here. A worker, this is a sort of read only example where we're just reading and we're sending it over web transport. Where we get a track in the worker, uh, we await, we basically just pipe it's readable through some kind of um, a wrapper for web codecs. And uh, we also have to transform it to serialize it, which also means um, chunking it and stuff for, uh, you know, and it, this, this might not be how you would send things over web transport, but this is a simple example, right? This is a sync, and that's it. Uh, the key here is that the attributes only exposed in workers, and that keeps data off the main thread. Uh, next slide. So a little more complicated. Let's say uh, that we want to read and write. We want to basically have a self view here, uh, or, or show local view only. Uh, and direct your attention again to the blue box in order to. Uh, so the previous slide was basically media stream track processor, and this slide is media stream track generator, where we need to uh, put data back into a, a, a track, put Humpty Dumpty back together again. So we expose only on a worker a new interface called video track source that has a writable attribute and a track, and also a, a Boolean muted attribute because sources in the media stream track model, you can mute sources can mute themselves, and all that means is that downstream tracks. Uh, get muted uh, events fired on them. <clears throat> so here again, the worker receives a track. Uh, so what we want to do here, this is an example from web codecs that I, I modified. It's basically a crop example where you use off screen canvas to crop some video. That's basically the simplest example of uh, modifying bits that actually works. So we, the worker gets the track, uh, we create a video source object and we post message the sources track back to main thread where it can be assigned to a source object. And then all we do the same as on the previous slide, we pipe it readable through a transform stream, which is shown below as a crop, and then we pipe it to the sources writable. And that's it. that's it. This aligns better with the media capture main spec, which separates sources from its track. And this makes it easy to extend the source interface later. The source critically stays in the worker while its track may be transferred cleanly to the main thread. And this is also uh, extremely clean and simple with uh, how it uh, interacts with track clone uh, and uh, even structure cloning. Uh, that's actually a flaw with media stream track generator. It's a sort of a pseudo object that is a track, but it's also a subclass of a track. So if you call track clone, 
you don't get another media stream track trainer. No, you get a plain track. So this solves that. Next slide. All right. Uh, process video and uh, apply constraints. So an issue we have is to, if we're going to do any kind of processing, like say we're cropping a video, uh, you might want to have a self view of that that has a high frame rate. Uh, but you might also want to lower the frame rate depending on where you're sending it. <clears throat> so here's an example uh, that uh, where you're sending over a peer connection, uh, which is basically you send it to the worker, do the processing, send the, the track back, and um, sorry, uh, this one. Yes. So you you assign the so when you get the track back to main thread, you assign it to. Uh, you admit you take a clone basically and assign it to the source object and then on the track you're sending you can now apply constraints and you can have a lower less resolution and lower frame rate on what you're sending so you can send for instance 30 frames per second while the self view doesn't start to stutter but it's still a, a good 60 frames per second if that's what the, the camera source was so that's great <clears throat> uh, next slide now that works great for peer connection but what if you're sending over uh, a web transport well, with web transport, we really wanted to encourage you to use um, uh, open the web transport in the worker. So this is the same, same example, basically. Um, and it shows how you can, uh, uh, how media stream tracks now are useful also in the worker. Again, we receive a track, we get a source from it, we clone that source, uh, and we send the original source back to main thread for self view at 60 frames per second. And then now we have a, uh, the clone, which is called send track in this example. We can apply constraints to it, do anything we want, just as if we were on main thread. Uh, and now we can open a web transport connection and we can read from that send track. So what we're actually reading from, we're doing two things here. We're reading from the track readable, sending it through the cropping and piping it to uh, the source writable. And at the same time, we're reading from the send track readable, uh, which is the processed downscaled uh, data and sending it out to, to web transport. I'm using pipe through here, which is a bit clever thing. Uh, an earlier example, I had a, a promise all, and these are really two operations that are separate. But it shows you that you can natively downscale and that media stream tracks apply constraint is, is very useful as a workaround basically to needing T. And um, so the question here for media stream track generator, how would you do this? How would you transfer media stream track generator to the worker and I don't think you can. So next slide. So this is the uh, summary slide here. Um, benefits that we see, the simpler API that takes advantage of transferable media stream track. There are fewer a new API objects to learn and it's friendly to workers. Uh, it satisfies core principles from a worker point of view uh, without main thread entangled APIs. It means that if a worker has a data object, it can do something about it. And critically, it does not block real-time media pipeline on the main thread by default. Uh, and the source stays in the worker separate from a track, which gives us clean transfer. Apply constraints is available in the worker. There's a uh, parity uh, and more with media stream track processor and generator and both features and brevity. And I have a link to a JavaScript fiddle. And that, uh, this highlights, I think Harald's also gonna show that the differences between these APIs aren't that uh, drastic as far as the number of lines of code. And uh, it's more about whether it's allowed in workers or not. Uh, and whether it relies on transferable streams, UI optimization. <clears throat> and there's a source muted attribute, which we threw in. And that's it. I also have some appendix slides that I um, might have time to go through since I'm a little early. Uh, if we look at appendix A, um, I might as well go through them. Uh, there was mentioned earlier that uh, we want promise callbacks, not streams. Well, you can actually do that because every readable, and this applies to any streams-based proposal, uh, you can do, use for await on that readable and you're basically being called back. You're getting, uh, your async function is going to be called then. And that means that you can basically operate. This is basically a promise callback is what I'm trying to say. And uh, here's what uh, UN wanted to show you, I think, is that you can now do operations like encode and you can guarantee that frame close will be called. Um, 
and Appendix B, uh, the next slide. Uh, there's also, I added this slide only if people want to have more than one readable from a track. But uh, inter so far, uh, it seems like people are more than happy to su suggest cloning the track for these things, which came up to avoid T, for example. So I don't think this is that critical, but I want to pull it out, uh, throw it out there. And I think that's it. Uh, I'm going to skip the last slide and we can move to discussion. Okay. Uh, so we have discussion till 9.30. Uh, I guess, uh, okay, so we have Harold and then you and in the queue. Yeah, so uh, I kind of like the proposal, first of all, because it's uh, almost totally equivalent to MSTP and MSDG. We'll, I'll return to that later. A couple of points I want to make on the presentation. Uh, the the examples where you have posting a message to the main thread to the, to the get a message stream check generator and uh, and get that to get generate a stream and post it back that's just wrong i mean obviously uh, mstg and mstp were designed to be available in the same context as a track is content uh, is available in so as soon as uh, met, as uh, so as soon as uh, track is available on on workers, MSDP and MSDG obviously need to be there too. Uh, I was not uh, very happy with the quoting of uh, uh, Chris Cunningham's message uh, for uh, on the on the on the web web codex decision because one of the heavy uh, things he said was that the availability of re related APIs is a strong reason why developers need to be able to uh, use these APIs in main thread. And, uh, and so I don't believe that that's an accurate, accurate representation of what he said. Uh, he did mention that uh, his decision did, did not, uh, uh, did not uh, foreclose the discussion on MSDP as MSDG, but uh, it doesn't foreclose it either way. And the third point was that the picture of uh, transferable, transferring streams, where you said that it's a pipeline between the origin, ori, ori, origin context and, uh, and the destination, destination context. That's completely true. But you imply that the source context is the main thread, which is not true. If you have a camera, the source of so, uh, a camera that generates threads, the source of the of the thread of, of the stream is the is the camera, not the main thread. So uh, these are just things I would say misrepresent the con the context. Uh, they're not direct comments on the actual API. We'll revisit the discussion about whether or not they should be able to, available on Matrix. But uh, the shape of the API, I like it. It's very much very very, very similar to what I propose. Next. Okay, I, I, I apologize if I misrepresented. I see that uh, the meter strip track processor and generator is exposed to dedicated worker and I guess I missed I, that but however I don't know that they're transferable no they're not they shouldn't be okay so you would have to create them in the worker naturally um which raised the question of um but um so I would still say though that the the model that people seem to so it's your suggestion that people should, so there are two ways to do things now, right? So uh, you can now either create, you have your track on main and you create a media stream track processor there and you transfer it's uh, uh, readable to the worker or you transfer the media stream track to the worker and you create a media stream track processor there. Right? Yep, that the, the difference the at the moment is that yeah. so we can, we, uh, people can implement the first one now and uh, because we don't yet have transferable media stream tracks, 
or availability of medium seam track on worker. We haven't worked through that yet, code-wise. Uh, so right. uh, okay. once we have it, yes, you have two ways. Yes, yeah, so I think that's bad. I streams think are, streams are not going to go back to being non-transferable. So, <clears throat> or obvi no, but obviously, in some browsers, we don't we don't they haven't implemented it yet. But they're not, uh, transferable streams are not going away. No, no, I agree. But they should remain what they were designed to do, which is to create tunnels between threads. And uh, we wouldn't have to implement these these magic uh, optimizations in order to get things entirely off main thread which is only a yeah. problem with the first model, not the second. Yeah, we have a, we have a difference of opinion in what that uh, tunnel line actually represents. So, uh, right, but the, probably the, listen to you, Anne. OK. OK. Uh, sure, can we go to slide 37? OK, 37. Uh, that... Yeah, that's this one, uh, where you say T is bad and we should not use it. Uh, I agree with currently. I hope we will be able to use it. And the reason is that uh, the, the small example is, is not great either. Uh, you're losing back pressure. And uh, I know, Yoniva, you're a big fan of back pressure. And you're, you're losing it, there, which is not great. And uh, I believe that we might be able to make it work. I'm not quite sure yet, but we might be able to add it to either uh, uh, to make a student track transform maybe or we can fix it but uh, we should be able to to have back pressure and so there's an issue there differently um, in general i think that uh, in terms of api shape if we assume that we think stream is the right way to do um, i think the api shape is, is, is good it's correct uh, that's that's solving some of the issues that i had uh, with uh, the uh, prior proposal. I think that um, in general, in Media Capture Main, we have the concept of a source and we have a concept of a track and we have a concept. We, we're defining the relationship between the source and the track. And the fact that we are introduci introducing a video track source, a JavaScript object that represents uh, a track source is a good thing. And uh, it's very similar to readable stream you can have a native readable stream, but you can also have a readable stream with the JavaScript source. And the JavaScript source is also an object that abides to uh, specific things. And so I think we should go there. Uh, it will be easier to extend things if we think if we think so. We remove some edge cases, uh, so it will it will be much cleaner. Uh, so that, that's why I I would tend to go with this way. Uh, as I said, there's no surprise for me to prefer uh, not relying on uh, transferable streams there. I think that we should rely on media stream track transfer, uh, which will be more reliable, which will be a, a, a typed way of transferring. And since it's typed, they, they are like uh, um, requirements that, that will be fulfilled while we streams uh, you don't know whether these same requirements will be fulfilled because things are generic objects. So that's comes. Okay, thanks, Yuan. Um, yeah, so, so sorry, I can had... I respond? Yeah. Uh, I may have made a mistake in the example of which track I clone uh, because I, uh, I chose the, the clone to be what you uh, would apply constraints to. But I think uh, it might work if we flip it around, right? So that the we send the original track, right? Uh, I don't. I don't think so. It. Yeah, I don't think it will work. Um, the the thing I would like to to get to is uh, like if you if you crop a frame, if you have like a source, and you have like a five fifths track and a thirty fifth track, then you should you should get uh, some back pressure that says, hey, I actually want thirty frames per second to the video track source. And we have no guarantee there. There's nothing there. And it's due because there's no back pressure on the writable stream. And if we start to introduce uh, back pressure on the writable stream, which we might want to do, it, it would be uh, a good exercise to do. Uh, then we are in a good situation because uh, promise-based callbacks have that. 
and uh, we will not be able to have that with, uh, with media stream tracked as uh, video track sources. So we should be able. Uh, so JavaScript will need to handle it. Uh, so I think we can make progress there if we really uh, want to go with streams. Well, that that cannot, uh, cannot self frame rate. Uh, I don't so. know. Understood. Okay. Um, so, uh, Jan Ivar, I had a question about several of the. Uh... Sorry, Bernard. Uh, can I just uh, can you jump to yeah. slide forty-seven? Uh, since I ended a little early, uh, Wait, this might uh, hold on. answer hold UN's on. question. Uh, which is uh... Appendix C. Appendix C. So okay. I think uh, UN was uh, concerned about back pressure, and is right. So I did actually write a fiddle that I got working in Chrome even. Uh, that uses uh, T. And so if you use a T solution, uh, one of the things it, it does for you is you do get pressure, back pressure, but at the cost of solving the T problem. So uh, I was able to solve it um, by, uh, by polyfilling synchronized true structured clone, uh, thanks to uh, uh, Matthias Bullens. And uh, the only thing uh, odd is the, um, it's a create frame dropper. It's the four lines from the bottom or five lines from the bottom. Uh, you have to have a transform string basically that drops frames. So that would be a way that uh, of solving the T problem. But this is why we're here. So yes, so it's true that uh, using a track uh, to and apply constraints is a workaround for this basically. We cannot solve the T problem. Bernard, you had a question? Yeah. Um, yeah, a bunch uh, looking through these, um, and it, th these didn't make sense to me, right? Because basically, you would, I, I think you wouldn't post message to the main thread because you basically create the uh, track processor on the main thread and, and transfer the stream, or in what you're saying, you would just transfer the track. So I don't. These slides don't make. Yeah. yeah, I don't think they're distinctions between the two APIs, right? Well, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I apologize for that. It's a misunderstanding that the I wasn't aware that the MediaStream Track Processor was uh, right. uh, creatable in in the worker environment. But it's still true that you could do this, and we would need to handle it. Yeah, uh, I, I added the feature last week. <laughs> yeah. Ah, no, I don't even okay, think that's you would. Probably why I didn't catch it then. Yeah, I don't even think you would do this without transferable media stream tracks, uh, because basically you'd create it on the main thread. You wouldn't like have a situation where you have something and you and you need right. to like post message the main the main thread to do it. Yeah. Right. Um, so, so, so Harold is right. There are a lot of similarities between the API, uh, but the difference is that uh, media stream track processor creates uh, a new class on the producer side, and it uh, uh, where as uh, my uh, UN's proposal uh, does not create a new object in that case. We just add a readable to the track, which we think is uh, sufficient and simpler because a readable already has uh, locking semantics. And once it's locked, you know that it's being consumed. We don't need a new object there um, other than to, uh, to add, uh, if you want to add some uh, uh, options that you couldn't add to the track itself. Yeah, I also uh, want to do add a comment on the web codex decision. The, the actual, I believe this is a quote from Chris Needham, not Chris Cunningham, uh, who is the working group chair. And as Harold said, there was a discussion of the where we are with respect to worker thread support overall. Um, and I think one of the big points, as Harold mentioned, was that, uh, for example, UN has recently proposed RTC data channel workers, um, which is is not widely implemented, but um, that's an example of something that today is only on the main thread. Um, and so as as Harold mentioned, uh, the, the big issue, a lot of the things that were constraining people to the main thread was lack of consistent worker support across the API set. Uh, anyway, so this wasn't okay. Chris Cunningham, it was Chris Needham. Well, Chris Needham is the chair of the- uh, of The chair of the Web Codex Working Web Codex Group. Working Group, right? I apologize for mixing up my Chris's. Uh, anyway, so yeah, so so and the other thing I want to mention is that MediaStream Track Generator is a bit of an odd duck in that it's um, 
uh, it's just, it's also a track. And that's where you and I feel like that's where we should have the separate API, um, not on the pro producer side. And that's a cleaner model that fits neatly with the uh, sources and sinks uh, model in media capture. Uh, as far as uh, main thread <coughs> areas where ma main uh, worker APIs are not available yet, I think that's actually a good use case for transferable streams. Because once you have set this up in the worker, you can, if you need to, transfer these streams using tunnels uh, back to the main thread for those few APIs that haven't been, uh, or those browsers that haven't implemented uh, uh, all APIs in workers yet. And that's that, uh, that also does not require breaking the, the transferable stream semantics. And I think that's a proper use of it. Okay. Uh, I don't know who's on the queue. Uh, IQ plus my self, I, I'm not sure. I think it's Harold and then you went. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, this was the response to UN. That if you have, uh, have to tell some place up the stream that your desired frame rate is 30, then back pressure cannot carry that information. Right. right. Uh, it, uh, because back pressure cannot send, tell the difference between I'm slightly late and I have to wait for one other frame and I only want every other frame. So then a frame dropper or separate tracks with separate uh, se separate frame rates is the way to go. We need, we need those kinds of, of signals to be carried. It's one of the areas where I, that I have always said that we needed to, to, to work on with the with a, with stream space proposals, the 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 signals that have to go in the other direction, and we haven't gotten around to it yet, and that worries me. Yeah. Also, Harold, they have they don't just go between one stage, right? They may have to hop. Like the encoder might be two stages away from the thing that has the feedback. Yep. But it isn't just from one stage to another; it's all the way through the chain. I I tend to agree with uh, with Harold that it's not always desired. But there, there are cases where it really depends whether the source is pull or push. And they, they are my, like, we are mostly concerned here about sources with pull, but in case uh, it's push, then it's actually useful to, to do that kind of stuff. And I, I wanted to mention that uh, consumers need to propagate uh, things up to uh, the, the source. You might be right that in some cases we should not use back pressure, but we certainly need to provide that information in some way. Um, you mentioned the other way, uh, your uh, was all uh, that we removed, and I agree with that we should uh, work on that and fi fix that. Um, the related to uh, Bernard, you mentioned that FTC Blocker channel is only available in, in main thread, and that's true in uh, some uh, in some browsers. That said, that does not uh, remove uh, the possibility. That, so that does not remove the idea that going to a worker is a good thing because yeah. you go to the worker to get uh, video frames. And the video frames, you will not be able to uh, push them into data channel. You will need to do some processing in any case. And it's better to do that processing in the worker. You set up all the things. And sadly, maybe the, the last bit uh, will be done. You will need to go back to the main thread. But still, you have some gains because you're doing like the heavy things uh, like uh, serialization, uh, packetization, uh, encoding and so on in, in a worker, uh, which, which, is, which is better. So, and you will be ready whenever uh, people implement RTC data channel uh, transfer to workers to actually uh, embrace it and use it. So that, that seems good uh, from that particular uh, use case. There may be other APIs that are missing uh, related to media stream track processing uh, we definitely need to, to look at them. But uh, my understanding is that uh, we, we, we're, in, we're in a good place there. And uh, we should, uh, if, if the issue is uh, implementation lagging, then we should push implementers to do more things in workers. And uh, I'm guessing that media stream track uh, transform will, will be a good, uh, good way also to uh, speed up things in, in workers in terms of API.
Okay, uh, so there's nobody left in the queue. Um, do we want to move on to Harold's presentation a bit early? It, we could leave some more time for discussion. I think that might be good. Yeah, I have yeah, myself. Yeah. <laughs> if we have a minute. Oh, hi, Guido. Sure. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I wanted to add that the, the issue of uh, main thread exposure and so on, it, it's for, on one hand, it's uh, availability of, of many other APIs that are not even specified to be available in workers. So it's not just implementation, but also specification. But also that, that we had first hand uh, requests from application developers that there are valid use cases that that want to do this in workers because of the nature of the application so it's a use case that okay that we don't that uh, okay we have we can say that we don't want to support their use case but i don't see any reason why we could make it a bit uh, uh, the harder the, the, the adding something to to the api so that by default it doesn't work if, the, if we don't want it to work by default but but there there are use cases for this on the main thread that are not the uh, that are valid use cases that are, that are uh, valid use cases that that that, that uh, people want want to use and I, I don't think that artificially denying those use cases is is uh, is a good idea otherwise the two APIs are basically equivalent except that just uh, it's, it's just surface. Uh, difference mainly. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, we have uh, Dom's in the queue. Uh, good when you say these are uh, use cases to make them run on the main thread, I wonder is it really about they needed to be on the main thread or just that dealing with workers is painful? The developer experience is not so great. And so they prefer not to have to deal with workers. Uh, well, first, the, the, there are there are use cases where the worker gives absolutely it's a net negative because the worker doesn't give. A, 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 I mean, the, what the worker gives you is that if you have some free resources, the worker allows you to use them uh, more efficiently so, to actually use them. So, but if you don't need those resources, so the, the worker is just only introducing a cost and it's not giving you any benefit. That has happened to applications that are not like a big conference. Uh, conferencing websites that are doing real uh, real time stuff, but more like editing applications for composition for for uh, uh, like uh, your applications where you are creating effects and, and and you are editing them there. That 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 sort of application uh, doesn't benefit from the worker, and and the worker only introduces complexity on one on one hand and and uh, and actually extra resource consumption. So yeah. I, I would respond to that by saying that uh, uh, even if there are such use cases, I think we're trying to protect the real-time media pipeline and that the media stream track, okay. even though there might be some non-real-time um, cases like canvas capture, that uh, we, we want to protect the parity with existing exposure in browsers today, which is to not expose media to main thread, except uh, in the cases of uh, uh, some really slow ones like Canvas, uh, uh, great bitmap data, and that kind of stuff. All right. Uh, so the discussion period for this is over. Turning the floor over to Harold. Thank you. So I'm making the rather uh, unwarranted assumption that uh, you have already 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 API already. So I'll just recap it shortly. Media Steam Track processor is a destination for a Media Steam Track and generates a readable stream. Media Steam Track generator exposes a writable stream of media frames and implements the Media Steam Track API. No frills, no extra APIs. This was as lean as, as lean and mean as we could make it. So next slide. Implementation usage. Yes, we shipped it in Chrome 94. It's actually actively used in products. There are people writing new features 
the link that is on the on the screen is to uh, one someone that made a made an open source uh, thing based on it with inserting it's that inserting talking headed center slides and we have very few problems reported on this surprisingly next slide and we believe that the threading model is something the app developer needs to pick. And the platform developer can encourage by making sure that what the app developer needs, but trying to dictate them is not the right approach. Streams are transferable objects. They can go wherever they need to go, and we can do it today. We have agreed that media stream tracks should be transferable and available in Worker. Therefore, we added Worker availability for media stream track generator and media stream track processor. I mean, once you have the track, and you need to make a stream from it, you should be able to do that wherever you are. That's true. We do need, next slide, to make sure that when we do work examples, such as the one that we have, ones that we have on webrtc.github.io/samples. We need to make sure that the samples always show realistic stuff that will work in real time. And when we don't need hard linkages to the main thread, it, they should be off thread. So we, need more, we, we always need more examples and improving the ones that are there. Next slide. There are lots of things we need to do in order to make the APIs as powerful as possible. Better control of adaptation at the source, whether it's back pressure, it's setting rates, it, it's uh, adapting the synchronizing streams. Experience with streams that don't come from cameras. The link I posted earlier was uh, generating one stream from slides and one stream from a camera and mixing them. And of course, those two streams are not synchronized. That's non-trivial. Uh, just, just because it doesn't go bang, bang, bang. It goes bang, 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 or something like that. And all this is stuff that we can work on further, but we have to get to a common base that we can start from. So I did a comparison table. Next slide. With the two, the two proposals that are currently present. Frame delivery. Yes, we have streams. That's a good, good point. We have the same objects inside the streams. That's a good point. We have a sharp difference of opinion in whether or not they should be available on main. And we have some oddities of what the things are derived from what. When we did the stream generator, we decided that this was not a stream object, not subclass of a stream object, didn't have a relationship with it. That's because the ways we have of generating streams today generate a stream. And we don't have any examples otherwhere in other places of generating a stream from a stream. Clone isn't the same thing. So having a stream generator that was a stream was a new 
was a new concept. And we didn't want to do that, so it's a separate class. We did the opposite thing on the stream consumer, which is the media stream track with some other properties. And I'm not quite sure about whether that was the right choice or not. In all other places in the platform, what generates an object, the actual source is invisible. Or it might be a completely different type of object. Like you don't have a camera object. You have a camera, but it's referred to, it's not made visible. But the, but the actual source, and if it's, if it's a track that exposed, what does it mean to clone it? Are there not two consumers of the stream? Stream the model doesn't work that way. Uh, is a new object of a, of a media stream track class, or is it of the stream consumer class? So I'm a bit iffy about having, a, having the, the stream consumer be a track. It could be that we should make it something that generates a track or can generate multiple tracks in the, for the cloning case. We can discuss that. And of course, the last difference is that we have shipped uh, this model for both audio and video, while the proposal on the table from uh, Janivar is to limit this uh, to video only. So we seem to have a very close similarity in models. And we also seem to have a very distinct set of set of differences that we can discuss as separate issues. But the underlying model seems to be gelling together in one place. We have tracks that go to streams, streams that go to tracks. And that's a good thing. So we're getting there. We just have some points of sharp disagreement. And I didn't find any reason to say anything more about it. So that's the end of my slides. And now we have plenty of time for discussion. And an empty queue. OK. Uh, I have uh, Dom and then Yanivar. Or maybe Dom was already there. Yeah, that was fun before. OK. Yanivar? Uh, yes, so um, I took a couple of notes. So the one thing is that streams are transferable. And that's true. And that's web compatible. However, implicit transfer of a stream source isn't. And that, that's the rub here. And I think uh, that the, the uh, existing proposal, the old proposal, relies on this. And that's what we want to get away from. <clears throat> That's the, depending on your interpretation that the stream source is actually in the main thread. My interpretation is that the stream source isn't in the main thread. It's off thread. It's in, in its own context. The stream source never moves. It's attached to the camera for the camera case. Right. But, but I was quoting directly from what WG's, uh, and it says that the purpose here is cross realm. Uh, process. Yes, we just happen to disagree on where uh, on uh, which realm is crossing from. With one so my claim is my claim in one realm if, and if you connect another. if you connect a media stream track <clears throat> to a media uh, to a media stream generator, you generate a stream that is sourced from the camera. You don't generate a stream that is sourced from from the main chat. But an issue has been opened because the optimizations that Chrome are doing are not technically allowed by right. the SAC. I have uh, seen the issue. I have not understood why uh, the claim is being made that this is not just a bad spec writing. Well, it seems uh, I don't find any support in the spec that uh, that implicitly moving well that. Uh, 
even if you call the original camera source off main thread, uh, the what will reduce stream spec does not seem to uh, consider that an optimizable path. And it also, as Yuan pointed out, this would create action at a distance examples where, because you cannot optimize all the time, but you can optimize some of the time. And that means that JavaScript developers might uh, scratch their heads wondering, well, this worked a minute ago. Why doesn't it work now? So I think, uh, hopefully, we well, agree uh, that. Which case does, doesn't work? I mean, the, when I talked to Adam Rice about what was the problem, he referred to uh, objects that were already enqueued when you transfer the stream, which is, uh, I think, a uh, side effect of uh, describing the queue as if it was in the original context, in the, in the, in the, in the context you were transferring from. In any case, uh, the issue posted uh, exposes that a, a lot of things that have to do with error cleanup and stuff are still tied to the realm in which uh, the object was created. And that would be main thread if you created on main thread. So but you also like, agreed that, yeah. I'd like to see uh, uh, worked examples of, of that and specific pointers to, to the text. I mean, I, I find a, I personally find this find the stream spec almost impossible to navigate. So if you can help me, Find find the place where these uh, uh, these tie-ins are. I would be very happy. Well, I mean, uh, but as far as the intent of the stream spec, uh, I had a slide for that. I uh, and I and I disagree on your reading of re reading of the intent. So I'm asking you to point out the language. Uh, yes, that was a direct quote from the spec. So. Yes, and, uh, and, and that's, uh, but, the, but the idea that the source is in the, in, 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 the, in the originating thread is an interpretation. Um, I, I don't think I mean, so. Literally, it says, it's, okay. Yeah, um, there are some algorithms that you need to point at, and uh, these algorithms are run in, in a given uh, context. And uh, so when you read and write there, uh, you, you cannot say, oh, we'll actually do that in the camera thread, which is not, no, no. You, 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 you do that in the, in the context of, of the stream. And that's how it's, it's done. Uh, the thing you, could, you can do are like pipe two and things like that. You, you could try to, and there's some leeway in, uh, in the spec from the, from the start to actually uh, optimize this. But for the rest, I, I don't think the, there's a, uh, uh, some uh, allowance from the spec. And uh, Adam Rice, uh, I, I quoted Adam Rice, who is a spec author, and, and said at some point, yeah, maybe what we should do is to have uh, a specific type of stream that we could optimize. And, uh, and, and I then- saw, I, saw, I saw the quote. And, but and, uh, that, and, that, that, uh, that bug thread is totally missing references to the spec. Uh, which, which means that means that I didn't manage to follow them. Yeah. Well, the um, point is on there. Go to, I, Bernard, Yannick, you can bring up slide 38. Slide 30, uh, 38. Okay, wow. That's, uh, yes, please. That's pretty far back. Hold on, let me navigate there. Am I getting close? <laughs> Can't really see the numbers here. Yanni Bar? Am I? Uh, so, sorry, uh, keep going. Oops, sorry, uh, it's um, it's the one called MSTP violate what we do transferable streams. Okay. Uh, a couple more. Um, keep going down. Ah, this one. There, that's yeah. the one. Yeah. So the first uh, paragraph there is a literal quote. It says a special kind of ident that transferable streams are a special kind of identity transform, which has the writable side in one realm and the readable side in another realm to implement cross realm transforms. I think it can't get more explicit than that, that this is about uh, transfer between realms, not uh, to solve uh, getting things that were in different realms on the same realm. Well, uh, which realm is the writable side on? 
So you're thinking uh, for media stream track processor. The so if you create it, uh, well, if you create media stream track processor on one thread A, mm -hmm. and then you transfer the writable, then uh, in that case, uh, oh, the slideshow uses readable as an oh, example. Uh, but if you replace it with writable, the errors will go the other way, right? Oh, uh, oh, media stream track processor doesn't have a write. Uh, media, media stream track generator doesn't have a writable. Media stream track processor doesn't have a readable. It's the same problem. Yeah. So, so the the example I'm showing is a, a media stream track processor. But it, the same slide for a media stream track generator would be that the the instead of source it would say sync on thread A, and instead of readable it would say writable on thread B, and the arrows would go the other way. Oh, uh, my question again is why do you think that the in this particular slide, the source lives on the mainstream, in the main realm, in, in the, the in the same realm as it was, it was as in initiated the, is cre it, the creation. Based on the language directly above uh, that references a writable side and the readable side. Source is the readable as well. Yeah. Is the right the writable side using? Is the writable side accessible? Uh, it's a, if I follow the link, then it goes gets me to transform stream. So I think the idea here is that you would you would uh, transfer transform stream. Uh, you can't get the transform stream from a readable stream. No, so I think um, if you follow the links of the spec, and I, I didn't write the spec, so. Uh, yeah. And I added links in the slide that follow uh, the same links that are in the spec. And that takes me to the writable side and readable side of a uh, transform stream. So it looks to me like the intent of this working group, of, of the WG working group, was that uh, transferable streams, what you want to transfer, basically transfer streams that have both the readable well, and writable. Well, uh, uh, consider another matter. If you have three sources, three thre threads, A, B, and C. Uh, you create a trans transform stream on A. You transfer the readable side to B, and then transfer the readable side on to C. Is there a link to B anywhere? Yes. Yes. Currently in the spec, there's a link. Ouch. That's Can you point me, point me to the spec sentence? There, there's, a, there's an issue in, in, the, in the GitHub, which is called the double transfer issue. Yeah. And this, this is a known issue. And this is, uh, yeah, this is a limitation of streams currently. Hmm. Uh, I don't, yeah, I don't so want to take up the queue too much. Yeah. So that's, that's the problem we need to solve. We have agreement that, 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 that streams have, have, thing, have issues to solve. Yes. Sorry, I had a question for Harold. Is that your stance? Is your stance now that exposure of raw video and audio on the main thread is OK? And has that changed since uh, we decided the working group already arrived at a worker only proposal for WebRTC encoded transform? And why, why is uh, your opinion? How do you reconcile your opinion with that uh, decision? Okay. Uh, I okay. Uh, we're out, we're out of time for this discussion. Yeah. Uh, uh, just just quick quick answer on the last one. Okay. I I have a bug open for restoring the ability to do encoded transforms on main main thread. That should be enough answer. enough answer on that. Please, other people, jump on the bug if you care. I do believe that uh, my personal belief is that the working group decision to accept the limitation was wrong. Okay. All right. So um, we've now reached uh, the wrap up and the next steps portion of this. Um, and so we've left about 10 minutes uh, in which time we can get feedback on some of the distinctions that have been made between these two things. Um, and so one of the things we could, for example, ask for a kind of sense of the room, it's not a formal CFC, is on some of the distinctions, for example, support for workers only versus worker and main, or audio and video versus video only. So that would be 
kind of my proposal to just get us because the proposals are are very very close on so many other aspects to just try to get some sense on these on the major distinctions uh, between the two. Um, does that make sense? Just try to get people's opinion on on whether they uh, on some of these issues. Okay. Well, uh, I, I guess uh, I, I, if you're uh, asking me, since I just presented uh, the proposal. And, and this meeting, <clears throat> I would love to get an, uh, a yes or no on whether the working group thinks that thinks uh, what what I presented is the direction the working group wants to go. And uh, answers could be yes. It could be yes if it also solves audio. Yes if it's exposed to main thread. A deal breaker for me personally, but maybe it's not for others. And or no. Uh, uh, one way I, I'd object to that uh, formulation. Okay. Because. Uh, uh, I don't see any reason why uh, um, uh, I'd, uh, uh, we have two uh, starting points that are possible for the for the for the specification and we can modify from them. I don't see a reason at this point to say that to to ask the working group to uh, uh, to how, how to say it? Uh, I don't see a reason to 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 ask the working group to assume that we're starting from yours. Well, I, I think we had uh, the same question when uh, uh, you had your presentation a year ago. Well, uh, so, isn't it normal? <laughs> The conclusion from that point was that uh, you and UN were raising so many so many points that we were awaiting a proposal an, an alternate proposal from you, and now we have an alternate proposal. So, we, yeah, so if if you if you want the working group to choose between the two approaches as a starting point for further discussion, that's perfectly reasonable. Uh, right. Making an assumption that we that that we, we that the only only option on the table is choosing yours is wrong. Well, I wasn't assuming that. I'm, I'm, I was asking the working group if this is the direction it wants to go. Because this is normal after you propose something, is to turn to your audience and say, what do you think? Right? Yep. Yeah. So uh, if, if, you're, if you're OK with, ask, ask, with asking the two questions, is the media stream track processor generator a starting point for further discussion? And is Janeva's proposal a starting point for further discussion? If you ask both questions, that's OK. Okay, um, I, I'd like. I have I'd a problem like with that. To, okay, can can I add another problem, which is that uh, it seems that everybody is taking for granted that uh, all these streams issues will be solved, and uh, I didn't see uh, much progress on, on the difficult issues. And I'd like to get a sense from the work groups if they feel that uh, to be successful we need to solve the issues, or if we just don't care and we will do it whatever. Or, or what? Because I think that uh, um, with the current state of the stream to work working group spec and features, uh, it's not good enough. And I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not feeling confident with any of the two proposals without a strong progress on the stream side uh, of the, these issues. Um, uh, my concern uh, with what Harold having two questions, uh, proposal of two questions is that I think media stream track processor and generator has an unfair advantage here in that it's been already been implemented in Chrome without uh, working group consensus and it offers audio and video. So I, I'm, I think we should ask a working group, uh, uh, what's, a, what's the minimum API surface that we can agree on to start standardizing? And I would actually hope that we add audio. Uh, not everyone might agree on that, but we don't have enough time to stand up an entire replacement for media sim track processor as a whole. Um, so I think it's an unfair to say that while well, we already mm -hmm. have something non-standard, you should accept it uh, wholesale or not. If I may offer what I understand to be the question the Yaniva is looking for, and I think a question all of us might agree on. Um, there are two different API shape. Uh, one is using readable and writable uh, 
and happens to be exposed only in workers, but that's not, not fundamental to it. And there is uh, the generator and processor API shape, which happens to be exposed on the main thread, but that's not critical to it. So I hear uh, Yaniva asking for a sense of the room between the two shapes uh, without uh, questions about whether it affects audio or not and whether it's uh, off or on main thread. Uh, thank you, Yuan. I think that that might be a way to, uh, if we can make the questions clear that uh, we're asking about shape separate from what it might imply, and then we're maybe a separate question for exposure to main and whether to solve audio or not. So if we can have those be totally independent questions, I think you're onto something. That, that was Bernard's okay. original proposal, except except for the stream issue. So. <laughs> right. Uh, and the streams question as well. So we yeah. can we can have three questions instead of the two original by Bernard and the other one that was the streams or not stream. Right. So API shape is one exposure domain to affects audio or not. Oh, sorry, include solves audio is three. And uh, streams are not as four. Okay. So uh, I, I think the question for streams though is and there seems to be clear interest in streams in what it solves. Uh, the question that Yuan is raising is how confident the real issues that remain uh, can be solved uh, and can be solved in a timeline comparable to the one we want to achieve with uh, this work. So uh, I'm not sure that's so much a design decision as much as uh, <laughs> trust in the ecosystem uh, kind of evaluation. Uh, so. Uh, that one, uh, I don't think it's necessarily a sense of a feeling as much as you know more research needed, more input from stream people needed, because the working group might have trust and be wrong, <laughs> or have not trust and be wrong. So uh, uh, I would probably separate that question from a sense of the room kind of. Uh, or... But it, but it would be good to have action items there. Um, I, I agree absolutely. Yeah. And I, I'd like to understand which action items should be. We we can have to to make it happen. Otherwise, I'm not feeling confident on uh, making progress. Okay, um, I have a draft of potential questions. Uh, let me show them. Okay. Are we thinking of doing a poll or are we gonna open it to- uh, I was just we thinking of just doing it in the chat yeah. room. Um, the three questions are, should media capture transform be based on streams? Uh, question two, should it be audio only? And question three, should it only support workers? Well, you mean video only, right? Uh, sorry, video only, right? Yeah. And that's the I would say video, video only for now. Uh, there's nothing precluding to edit later once we will have done more research. So j just, I guess I should put myself on cue, but just one comment on those questions. Like I I could live with the answers to yes or no to as the answer to the to every single one of those questions. Like, so <laughs> I, I don't, and I don't know enough about the details of the implementations to have strong inputs. So for some people on the call here, this may be a, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I won't provide any input, but it, it you know, it's a complicated, it, it, we, we may be discussing a detail that maybe some of the, you know, there, there may be, we may need more things that help us understand the consequences to the answers to these questions before some of us can really provide very useful answers. And like you and I totally hear that's very unactionable and does not make me feel very happy towards resolving these things either. Um, but I don't know what to say to any of them. So there you go. <laughs> okay. Um... Well, we're, we're almost out of time, well, but we can send do the questions on the mailing list as well. Could you change question two to uh, should media capture transform solve audio? I think is the real okay. question there. And uh, should media and the third one I would say should media capture transform be exposed to main thread uh, or, or I don't know. Maybe only support workers with that. Support, just say support main threat. 
Okay. No, no, uh, no, not that your proposal supports it. It's just that makes it uh, annoying because you have to create a worker. You can always transfer the stream to the main. Yep. Okay, so exposed on main thread. Okay, be exposed on main thread. Okay. All right. I know. I think that, I think there's a fourth question on API shape because I heard Harald interested in solving some of these. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Harald, uh, that you would you had an uh, interest in the existing shape, even if we solved some of these. So uh, I I'd like to to I'd like us to get an uh, get an answer to should. Uh, should the stream generate be a be a be a track, and should the should the stream consumer be a track? Because uh, that's uh, that's an API shape. Uh, that that's the main difference in the API shape just now. Maybe uh, to help Colin decide, I mean, the, each of these issues should be, uh, should have its, its own summary somewhere so that somebody can read the summary and the pros and cons and decide because I feel like it will be difficult for people out, out of the room to, to understand like the fourth question, for instance. I agree. Yeah, and I think a way to frame uh, this summary, these pros and cons, is to explain what will change for developers uh, when facing the different answers to, to these questions. Because um, at the end of the day, that's really the kind of input the rest of the people in this room can give. It's not, you know, this will be terrible to implement in my browser. It will be. Uh, this will make implementing this or that application uh, more difficult or easier. I mean, I, in the API shape thing, there may also be a, a question about uh, evolution of the API, how we might uh, make it evolve over time. So th that might be a consideration to, to bring in that summary. But otherwise, uh, I would suggest we formulate it that way. Okay, so I think the next step is uh, are we understanding this is to ask these questions on the mailing list because I think we're out of time in this meeting. Is, is that where we go next? And ask them individually? Yeah. Um, I think question four is hard to to grasp um, for someone who hasn't seen the whole presentation, both presentations. So, um, um, so I want to I would suggest uh, the chairs meet and figure out the questions and the summary of uh, pros and cons, because I agree uh, right now they are too abstract to gather a useful opinion. So uh, we won't do that in minus four minutes. So uh, I suggest we take that offline. Um, okay. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Thank you. You at TPAC. See you there. Stop recording. That's the button.